Psalms chapter 3. It says, a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. So this pictures outright a psalm when family members, because Absalom, his son, goes against you. This also pictures Israel being chased by the Antichrist and the troubles that they will see. And this psalm is a troubling psalm by family and friends. And one aspect we should get from chapter 3 of Psalms is all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to have problems. You're going to have troubles. Salvation does not solve and give you a wonderful, great living life. Lord, and then another thing with David is he's reaping what he's sowing. With Bathsheba and Uriah. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? And as you live more and more for God and do more and more for God and sin more and more, troubles are going to increase. Many are they that rise up against me. And David had them. From a, from a young boy, uh, King Saul chasing him, to the Philistines chasing him, to him setting his, himself out for Goliath and having a lion and a bear uh, try to get his sheep and his own brothers didn't understand him and he's got his son chasing him now and he, he's got uh, his, his sons are a rebellion one has he rapes his, his, his uh, daughter-in-law and troubles happen we that are in God and those that are the children of God by Jesus Christ we are not we don't have a force field with troubles and problems in the world. Because I'm saved, because I believe on Jesus Christ, doesn't mean everything's going to be happy and go lucky. Now, I'll be like that when we get to glory, but not now. So when they say, you know, receive Christ and your life will be wonderful, you'll get healing, you'll get money, you'll get prosperity, that's not a Bible doctrine. And we see it with the three chapters of Psalms. Many, many. That means a lot. Not all. Not all your family is going to be against you. Not all the people in the church is going to be. Listen, we've had people in our church go against us. I've had family who goes against me. I've had people who don't even know me go against me for the word of God. Many, not all. There are three aspects of our public ministry uh, uh, that we have as a family. Number one, people don't even care. Number two, people hate us. And number three, people love us for what we do with the gospel. And there are many that don't care. There are many that hate us. And there are many that love us doing what we do. Many there be which say of my soul. You know, they speak evil of, of our eternal being in Christ. When, when you rank on me because I do something for the Lord, listen, that's my soul that is given to God, that's been purchased by God. There is no help for him in God. God ain't going to help him. And there are people who believe, you know, you're a Christian, you're powerless, and you have, you know, look, look at me. I'm wicked, and I don't have your God, and I'm prosperity, I'm wonderful. Look at you, you got troubles, you got problems. Yeah. On this earth, but wait till we get to glory. Wait till one day when the when the church is raptured and and what I've done for myself would be wood, hay, or stubble. What I've done for Christ, gold, silver, precious stones. And as, as I watch you get cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Now you get the problems and troubles and tribulations and uh, the torture. And I get grace, mercy, love, and joy for all eternity. It's not balanced upon what, what happens on this earth. It balanced upon what happens in eternity. Sila. Now, I'm told Sila is a musical rest because Psalms, Psalms is your songbook. You want to glorify a holy songbook hymnal? Why don't we open up the book of Psalms and say, Psalms number three, we'll sing that for, for church service. Why do we sing a bunch of hymns that are not biblically correct? And you need to go to the biblical truth of our hymns, the study that I do. Some hymns are good. Some hymns are not. I saw a hymn the other day by um, 
Oh, what's her name? Fanny. Fanny Crosby. Now, in the hymnal, it was not the scripture correct. I don't know if that's how she wrote it, but it was not scripturally correct. Especially your Christmas carols. They're practically, all, most of them are not scripturally correct. Now, that's Sila. This is your hymnal. I've seen Psalm 23 put to complete reverse opposite order of not, of not the King James Bible and sung in a Baptist church. I won't sing it. If I find a hymn that is against the Bible and, and, and changes scripture around, there's one hymn, uh, you know, Jesus is, is the true, the life, and the way. Uh -uh, that's not what the Bible says. I'm not singing it. We've been there for 10,000 years. The Bible says there, there is no time in eternity. I'm not singing that part. I'll sing the rest of the good part. But when it comes to that, the, you know, when it goes against the Bible, my mouth goes shut. You want a hymnal, Psalms. It's not the Bible in error. Is the, is the Bible not without error? Is the Bible the correct word of God? And why don't we do the Psalms for, for our hymn sings and, and do it correctly? Sila is also a reference, I'm told by one of my teachers, that's a reference to the second advent. When you see Sila in the Psalms within two or three verses before or two or three verses after, you see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this, this Psalm pictures Israel, oh, we got troubles, and they do. Everybody is against Israel. Even America to a point. America is not 100% for Israel. There's some grounds where we take Israel's enemy. I mean, if we were truly for Israel, every time the PLO launches missiles into uh, Israel, we'd be launching missiles at the PLO. We would tell the United Nations, get the blank out of our country because you're against Israel. To the, uh, to the KKK, you're against the Jew, get, of our, get out of our country. But we allow them. The Catholics are against the Jews. Well, now have Catholics. Bible says, I will curse them that curse you. But thou, O Lord, art a shield. That's faith for the Christian warrior. When we talk about the armor of the shield, it's faith. The shield of faith. What, what's the faith here? You're going to take care of us, Lord, even though we got troubles right now. That's a lot of faith. That I am having agony, I'm having troubles, I'm having problems right now, and God's going to take care of me, and I've got to believe that. That's hard. And countless times, Jesus with his disciples, where's your faith? They're out in a boat. The boat is, is rocking around. The water's come in. The boat's about to sink. Jesus is sleeping. And they're like, yo, master, get up, get up, do something. And he clears the storm. Everything gets right. Just, Where's your faith? I think I would be a little upset on that boat too. But they were supposed to have faith to believe that he said we're getting to the other side. Does God lie? No. They were going to get to the other side. Even if he didn't stop the storm. My glory. And God ought to be our glory. And if we put glory in anything but God, we need to repent. If we put glory in ourselves, we got to repent. We sin. We put glory to anybody but God in Jesus. We need to repent. We sin. We put glory in anything. We need to repent. We need to put our glory in God only. And the lifter up of my head. Now what's that? There was a man that Jesus said, he, he knelt down at the altar, he, he banged his chest, said, Lord God, I'm not worthy. <coughs> Forgive me, a sinner. And there have been times as a child and with my children, you know, they've done something wrong. Or they feel like they've done something wrong. And, and they, they're looking, you know, they got their head down. And, you know, you, you, you take your, you put, you, you put their hand up, you put their head up, look at me. I still love you. I still care for you. Yeah, you did wrong. Yeah, we got a problem, but I love you. And that's what lifting that, it's not lifting my head up in pride, you know. It's God saying, All right, come on, pick up that head and lift you up. I'll take care of you. I'll be with you. 
It's a head hanging down like, oh, misery, oh, problems, oh, pain. Hey, come on, pick it up. I'll take care of you. Get your eyes off the storm. Get your eyes on me. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. Ooh, another Selah. Those Jews are going to be crying out in the tribulation period. That's not the one. We got to run. Our lives are killing. They're beheading Jews. If I'm Jewish, I'm in trouble. Oh, Jehovah, help us. They're going to have the whole world against them. Now, there are going to be some nations that Jesus said are going to take care of them, but they're going to be in hiding too. Because <coughs> I guarantee those nations are not going to take the mark and they're going to be in hiding. Because they can't get, they cannot take the mark. And Jesus said, Well, come on in to me in the millennium. Because those that receive the mark are damned. So the nations that protect the Jews and the Jewish people are going to be in anguish and be in hiding. And God says in Revelation 12, I have a place prepared for them. They're going to get there in the merit of their life. And many probably won't make it. Now here's a familiar verse that we're going to come up in chapter 4, verse 8. I laid me down and slept. Now, David's got troubles. David's got problems. And there's one thing naturally the body doesn't do it. The body, when he got troubles, it's not going to lay down. It's not going to go to sleep. But that's the rest in peace that God's given David. And when those Jews, when they get to the place where God prepared for them, we say, sell a preacher. Yeah, the Antichrist is still going to be chasing them. God may be giving them just a little rest, but that rest comes. That rest comes. The sailor comes. The rest comes. The lying down. When Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne of David, their Messiah, that will be the rest. There's prophets that speak about the, they're going to be lying underneath their own trees. They're going to be at peace. That's the second uh, Advent passage. And yet, I've been in troubles. I've been in problems. I've been in situations. And I'm a terrible sleeper when nothing is wrong, when everything's right. And I sleep terrible. But there are times I have troubles and problems and I just go to sleep and I awake. For the Lord sustained me, not the pills, not the doctors, not the guns, not the swords, not the horses, not the troops. The Lord takes care of us. And there is. Many times where the Lord does what he does for us because of his mercy and his grace. And again, that rests for the Jews when they get in the millennium. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people. Well, then why is David fleeing from Absalom? Why are the Jews fleeing from the Antichrist? That have set themselves against me round about. Match that with verse 1. I'm not going to be afraid of them but I'm running. Well one day for the Jew. The running will end when Jesus comes. And Jesus said at one point. I'm not going to correct, quote this correctly. But he said listen. They offend you in one city. Go to another city. You know what? There's times for a Christian to pack up and say, you know what? I'm not living here no more. When Jesus told his disciples, if you go into the city and they don't receive you and they reject you, walk out of that city and, and strike the dust off your shoes or your feet. He's not, and they're not going to go back and live in that city. They're going to go find somewhere else. Now we got to the point that the Bible says a prophet and a, a man of God is not counted worthy of his own people there was a time that god told me twice and i listened the last time i don't want you in connecticut no more i want you in florida they're not going to listen to you you're going to get tro troubles you're going to get problems you got all kinds of problems going on go down to florida and then you know we got down to florida so that means all your problems went away all your no they got twice as much I mean, we had battle with the police in Norwich, but we haven't had the battle that we've had with the police with Daytona Beach. 
and things are so and rightfully properly we got it all to worked out and all that but just because i went where god told me to go florida did it mean okay all my trouble is going to end verse one and two but when the jews get in the promised land in there by jesus the way that joshua did it that's why it says jesus in acts and hebrews who are their enemies? The goats. Where are the goats in hell? The devil, their enemy, is bound up for a thousand years. The nations that did help them are in the millennium with them. And then at the end of seven years, something happens. The devil is loose for a season. All right, here's their enemy. You don't need to worry. God, pff, fire, they're done. Heavens, heavens and earth roll up into a scroll and the great white throne appears. And after that, for the Jewish person, I believe it's the new heavens. I mean, excuse me, take that back. The new earth. I believe the Jewish people get the new earth. Christians get new Jerusalem and the new heavens go to the Gentiles. Those are in the land's book of life. What are they going to fear after that? The devil has been totally cast into the lake of fire and he ain't never coming out. And I would assume at least 10,000 are in hell. 10,000 would be a minimum in the lake of fire, the Jews' enemies, and they don't need to worry. Arise, O Lord. What do you think that, that reference is to? Where would God get up? Ask Stephen. That's picturing God, Jesus Christ, Lord, God, Jesus, God, God is Jesus. Standing up and saying, go get them. You married your bride, son. Go for the honeymoon. And pick up the family for the reception in my city, Jerusalem. That's the second Advent passage. Save me. That's when Jesus is going to save the nation of Israel corporate. Right there is when the nation of Israel will be saved. When Jesus comes back and brings them into the promised land. Oh my God. And I bet you new Bible say OMG. Which is a sin. You only use the term oh my God in two expressions. I'm in deep trouble. I am a lot of trouble. Oh my God help me. You would use that kind of expression, you are in, in a home, you are in a house, you're in a car, and there's fire, and, and by the mercy of God, oh my God, I need help. And another time you would use that verse, oh my God, is right here. When the nation of Israel is brought into the promised land, oh my God, and they're talking about Jesus. What are they saying to Jesus? Oh my God, you're my God. Jehovah Witnesses don't say that. When the nation of Israel said, acknowledges that's our Messiah, that is Jesus, yes he is, they'll be saying, oh my God, be going more than what a Jehovah Witness will say. Glory, he's come, and we've got victory over our enemies. There it is. That's what they wanted Jesus to do when he came the first time. He's going to conquer Rome. Nope, that's not the first advent. The first advent was he was to come and suffer and die for us. Second advent is where he gets victory for the Jewish people. Oh my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Second advent. Second advent. Thou hast broken the teeth of, of the ungodly. Now look at Proverbs 25, 19 real quick. And we'll talk about this, not in detail, but Proverbs 25, 19. My pages stopped sticking together. 25, 19, the Proverbs, David's son, Solomon wrote, wrote Proverbs. And I'm having a problem turning my pages here. 25, 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble Psalm 3.1, it's like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. It's pain and it's awkward. Now, and they don't have the dates in, in Psalms, so I, I don't know when this is written, but this is written at the time of David. 
you got a broken tooth, you didn't go to the dentist. I don't even think they had dentists. And I would be afraid to even think what they would use for dentistry. You would probably just yank the tooth out. Which would be just as much painful as I've had my lifetime. Thank the Lord for a dentist that helped me out. But I, I you know you though stingy on the on the Novocaine or the Novocaine wear it out, but he helped me free. He pulled my tooth out and I still felt the pain and I, I grabbed his face. And Proverbs says an ungodly, that's not Jesus Christ. When you put your trust in the Antichrist, the, the, the tribulation, you might, as well have, you just might as well have a broken tooth on every tooth you got. And I've had teeth where they've been broken and you eat and it's just as worth. I've had teeth where you, you get something cold or you get something hot and it just drives that one nerve that goes through your whole entire body. That's what God's going to do to the heathen. And when they get that pain of that broken tooth, it stays with them. Have you ever had a, a tooth pain? Have you had an extreme tooth pain? I have. That pain goes with them in torments in hell for all eternity. That is one of the descriptions of many descriptions of a man in hell. You got a broken tooth? You got a troubled tooth? You got a painful tooth? Well, you're going to take that right into hell. And there is no Novocaine. There is no gels. There is no creams. There's no salt wash. Salt wash there's no dentist. There's no clover oil. You live with the rest of your life with a toothache, beyond all toothaches, and with every else in your body being tormented in a flame. And notice how he says ungodly. When Jesus Christ comes back, he ain't going to... He ain't going to judge and condemn and torment into hell. Those are not godly. Those are godly, I mean. The ungodly will be an enemy of Jesus Christ and they will face judgment and they will face hell. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. You got that? Read that. That goes even for the church. Age. My salvation is not my salvation. We use that wrong. My salvation belongs to God because God saved me. God purchased me. So my salvation is God's salvation. I had nothing part of it. So when we say my salvation, we're actually really saying it incorrectly. It's God's. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Look how David went from David himself and to thy people, the Jewish people. Selah, second advent passage. And when, when Jesus Christ comes, Selah, oh, the blessings that he will put upon him. He removes the curse off the earth. Glory to God. 